Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to return to our conversation with Caitlin Long, 22-year veteran of Wall Street, now leading voice in the world of cryptocurrency. In the last segment, we discussed what's happening in Wyoming. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening on Wall Street in relation to Bitcoin. And uh, we're going to get to rehypothecation in a second. But first, you were recently on a panel with the SEC's uh, Jay Clayton. So unpack for us um, what's going on there, his views on cryptocurrency. The SEC is obviously getting them more involved. Uh, Caitlin. Well, they're, they're, the SEC uh, has historically said that all cryptocurrencies, except for Bitcoin implicitly, uh, are securities. And I disagree with that. They've backed away from that and are, in, are now actually opening the door to the notion that something might change its stripes. Uh, in other words, it might have been a security when it, when it, when it began, but like Ethereum, uh, it, it's become so decentralized, same with Bitcoin, it's become so decentralized that it's no longer a security. Uh, also, of course, the, uh, there is a, a, a push to get financialization of Bitcoin done through traditional Wall Street products like ETFs and depository receipts, and uh, that's, a, that's a big part. Uh, it doesn't sound like the ETF will be approved anytime really soon because they keep making noises about it like it's just coming it's just coming we just yeah. need to get price discovery locked down we're not happy with how you're doing price discovery and um, but you think that they're pushing it because they're doing due diligence or because it's an orchestrated campaign to kind of introduce more of what I'm hearing you say there more of the Wall Street products and therefore gain more of the product market share well, it's, it's interesting. The SEC has actually not been green lighting this, so they've actually put the brakes on it. Um, but I will say this, that the moment Wall Street started getting into Bitcoin uh, was, was when Bitcoin peaked in price. And in retrospect, that's actually not a shock because the CME brought in the futures contract last right. December at twenty thousand per Bitcoin, and we've yep. seen nothing but down ticks since then. And then you had the uh, the backed announcement, which is a sister company of the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, and then when the SEC chairman last week implied that the ETF isn't going to be approved anytime soon, guess what? Bitcoin bounced. So uh, you know we can't draw gross generalizations, but I know the theory behind why that's indeed the case. It's very counterintuitive. A lot of folks would naturally think Wall Street coming in, wait a minute, more demand for Bitcoin. Ah, but here's the challenge. Wall Street coming in equals a lot of this three card Monty that's practiced behind the scenes using rehypothecation and, and other tricks like that, 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 that create artificial supply. And uh, one, of, one of my very respected Wall Street colleagues even said that Wall Street needs to fix Bitcoin's supply problem. And he meant it in the best of terms because he looks at it as another asset that Wall Street can trade. Right. Now, there is a Wall Street veteran who's in this space, Patrick Byrne yes. from Overstock.com. Yes. And he went to battle with the SEC over naked short selling. He did. And, um, and one of the reasons he was drawn to Bitcoin and why he's launching his own platform to trade securities, crypto securities, because he uh, felt that he was a victim of this naked short selling and reg show, as it's called. Yes. You talked about the fact that settlement doesn't occur for two or three days. Those Even at that rate, the settlements are not reconciled 100 percent. That's right. So you have... Sales, Failures to deliver. Fail and, to yep. deliver. Sales yep. are not matched with buys. Yep. And you can conceivably have more people selling more stock than there is in existence. That's right. It happens. Right. And therefore, if you can print a sale out of thin air, you can drive the price down. That's right. Now, we've had this discussion on the show before in relation to silver. Uh, silver contracts and naked shorting of silver. And there seems to be, maybe you can clear up this argument because you are a Wall Street veteran and you would know definitively the answer to this. People say, well, for every buyer, there's a seller and they can't have a naked short sale. But in fact, with this uh, uh, configuration as it is, you can in fact sell uh, contracts that are not backed by anything, that you're printing uh, contracts, yes or no? Yes, absolutely, yes. The, the exhibit A is the Dole Food case, and where it was revealed that there were more than one-third extra legal valid claims to Dole Food shares than there were Dole Food shares that were legally issued and outstanding. That was a 2017 court case. Uh, the IMF has done some terrific work estimating the number of 
financial institutions who report that they own the very same treasury bond. So I was just reading on the train on the way here this morning about the, the Fed's financial stability report that came out last week. They didn't identify that as a risk issue. They have no clue how many times the same treasury bond is owned by the same financial, by different financial institutions. Okay, that brings us to rehypothecation. Yes. And in the case of the London, infinite rehypothecation. That's right. So many of the scandals of the last 20 years, whether it's AIG, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, the London Whale, it's mm -hmm. on this uh, trick of infinite rehypothecation, which basically means, as you just pointed out, you can have uh, an infinite number of owners of the same bond. Right. You're, you're lending the bond out uh, as collateral an infinite number of times. In, in the U.S., I believe it's capped at 140 percent of the some fair market value of that security or something of that nature, but you end up with people routing their fraud through London. And London becomes the hot spot, the global hot spot of financial fraud for that reason. But so here we are with Bitcoin and it is no counterparty risk. It's hard money, it's sound money. Wall Street gets involved, but they're bringing in the products. They're bringing in their bag of tricks, yep. which allows them to rehypothecate, which is to lend uh, multiple times the same asset. Right. Uh, which is a way, in effect, to control the price. Bingo. To control the price, yep. the price discovery, right? So walk us through a little bit more how that works. Well, there are lots of ways that it happens. It all, as you allude, comes down to how the securities are lent. And so if Bitcoin, if there's a coin lending market, of which, by the way, there is a lot right now. Um, the CEO of the New York Stock Exchange's parent was also speaking at the Consensus Invest conference last week. And he said, look, there's an awful lot of, of coin lending happening that's creating fake Bitcoin claims right now. I'm not, th those weren't his, his exact words, but he's right. It's already happening. And, and this is before the really big Wall Street money comes in. Of course, markets are forward looking, so they know the big money's coming in, and so the price um, reflects an expectation of that. Uh, but ultimately, it, it, it does have to do with lending. And here's why auditors don't catch this. It took me a while to figure that out. Why are auditors not catching this? Because accounting standards post Lehman actually require that multiple financial institutions report that they own the same bond. From their perspective, as long as there's a different dollar of debt recorded against it, then the balance sheet's balance and everything's okay. What that does is just inflate everybody's balance sheet, but at a systemic level, you have no clue how many people actually are reporting that they own the same bond or the same security or the same Bitcoin um, until there's some sort of a reckoning event. The financial regulators have no clue. And to CFTC Chairman Chris Giancarlo's credit, he acknowledges this. This is a problem. But that sounds if the regulators and Wall Street and the fund managers are all taking advantage of what could ostensibly be called fraud, that is a racket by definition. That is how the system works. And I'll tell you, most people who work on Wall Street are well-meaning and would be shocked if they really understood it. There's not a lot of incentive to get out of your swim lane. I, I did that, not a lot of folks do. Uh, not also a lot of incentive to look under the hood. And there's a great judge in Delaware, the Delaware Chancery Court, who gave a speech two years ago called the Blockchain Plunger. And he talks about how this technology is finally going to clean up the capital markets. And he said to the buy side, these are the, the fiduciaries of our pension money, our 401k money, our, our insurance money, um, our mutual funds, the long only buy side. These are the folks who should be pushing back to really clean up all these practices because, as he points out, the, the sell side banks like like the uh, investment banks and like the stock exchanges are making a lot of money off this. They're, they're getting uh, bid offer spreads and fees off trading assets that don't exist. Right, they, I mean, they charge an interest on the, these uh, uh, sure. imaginary securities that they're lending into the, the marketplace. Sure. And it's a huge profit center for them. Uh, now, you did a podcast recently with Trace Mayer. Yes. And this rehypothecation topic came up. Yep. And uh, so there is an interesting situation with Bitcoin because it, all this rehypothecation and all these schemes are are enabled by the fact that the securities are held in street name. Yes. Okay. They're not held in the individual's name. That's right. You know, people buy stock at Schwab or whatever. That stock is held in the name of Schwab, and yep. Schwab's part of the racket. Omnibus account. But you can take delivery of stock if you want to, but most people don't. Okay. And certainly on a pension fund. And the don't SEC's take. made it really hard, frankly. They don't want people to take paper stock certificates. Uh, again, referring yeah. to the racket between <laughs> the regulators, who include the SEC, Wall Street, and fund management. But with Bitcoin, I can take delivery of my private keys. Yep. People have
have their private keys. Yep. If the majority of folks owning Bitcoin took delivery of their private keys, uh, would it in fact uh, diminish, if not eradicate or get rid of this risk of re Absolutely. It would. Yep, not your keys, not your Bitcoin in Andreas Antonopoulos's words. So there's a way to fight back. Absolutely. If you're a libertarian, if you're an anarcho-capitalist, if you're a, you know. If you're a rational, common sense human being, you, you, if you live in Wyoming <laughs> and absolutely. you're packing. Yeah, and you're down there eating a big fat steak. And you got a cowboy hat on. And you got your private key. Absolutely. Then Wall Street racketeers can go, you know, jump over a bridge. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, that is that is the answer, and 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 it's interesting because to the extent that Wall Street is coming in, I think there's a hard lesson that's going to be learned by the Wall Street firms who right because they're going to be holding garbage. And, if everyone, if they've got all these contracts based on rehypothecation, and everyone suddenly takes delivery of their keys, they're holding squat. Right, and, and and in fact, it can actually bankrupt them. And it's an interesting question. And, and I wrote a letter with uh, with uh, four others, including two Bitcoin core developers, to the SEC a couple of months ago, warning that if you're letting core market infrastructure get in and start creating Wall Street products, which settle on typically a T plus two basis against something that settles in near real time, you're naturally going to have those timing mismatches. And if Wall Street in, it doesn't acknowledge that there's this insidious rehypothecation that takes place, which is very, very difficult to detect, right? The auditors can't even pick it up. So, so at some point, there's a reckoning event. There's a run on the bank or there's a hard fork that, that, that reveals whether right, the hard Wall Street's fork is also, or not. is also another option. Yep. The, the nodes can hard fork out of Wall Street. Absolutely. They can say to Wall Street, give them a tremendous Wyoming middle finger and say, we're going to hard fork you to death. Well, and to use Andreas Antonopoulos' phrase, corpo coin, Wall Street will ultimately end up, basically the, 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 the Bitcoiners, the core holders will, will fork off into their own Bitcoin and Wall Street will be left with corpo coin, which will be corpo coin. A, a, a version of Bitcoin, but that fits into their, their, their categories, but it's not right. real Bitcoin. Right, I think that's already called, it's called Ripple. <laughs> I think there's already one out there, Corpo Coin. All right, well, uh, so BACT briefly, we've got about 30 seconds here. BACT is launching soon. Uh, their intentions are, are honorable, or we have to watch them uh, watch watch our BACT? Both. We've gotten some answers to some of the questions. They are not going in with, with leverage up front. They, they've committed, at least uh, in the contract, not to rehypothecate. They haven't answered the question yet. Will they rehypothecate out the back end in the warehouse, which is they're going to be where they're going to be storing Bitcoin in an omnibus account. Um, Devil's going to be in the details on all of these folks. It'd be great if they were a good player. I would welcome them. Be and they're in a great position to help us because of their relationship with the New York Stock Exchange being a sister company to help us actually take the entire securities industry into a blockchain based settlement system. So I hope that and, 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 and very much um, enc encourage them to, to learn from what they're getting into with Bitcoin and quickly pivot to where we really can get improvement in capital markets, which is taking all securities, putting them on a blockchain natively, and then therefore cleaning up a lot of this mess. Cool. Caitlin Law, thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. My honor. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Ice Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest, Caitlin Long. Wow. What a woman. If you want to reach us on Twitter, it's Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.